everybody. In this video, we are going to continue talking about four-digit subtraction, except we are doing across zeros. First of all, I want to show you a problem that only has two zeros at the top and what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. First, we start in the ones place, just like always, and we ask ourselves, is there more on top or more on the floor? Here, there is more on the floor, so we're going to have to go next door, but no one's home. So we're going to have to go next door to see if there's anybody home in the hundreds place, and there's not. So now the hundreds place is going to go next door to the thousands place and see if there's anybody home. And finally, there's somebody home. It's a three. We're going to take one from the three and make him into a two. Now remember, we can only give one to the next door neighbor. So we're going to give the one to the hundreds place, which is a zero, making him a ten. So I took the one from here, made this a two, and gave it to the next door neighbor. Now, this one can give one to his next door neighbor. So we're gonna mark out the 10. He's gonna become a nine and give one to his next door neighbor, which is a zero. That still doesn't help us subtract one minus two, but now we can take one from this next door neighbor and give it to him. So we're gonna mark out the 10 and make him a nine and make this one into a 11. Notice how it's an 11 because this is a one. We just put a one in front of whatever number is here, okay? If this was a zero, it would have been 10, but it's an 11 because this is a one, not a zero. 11 take away two is nine. Nine, make sure you look very carefully at this and notice which number you're subtracting from. We've marked out the zero and the 10, so you have to really look up. Nine minus six is three. Nine minus four is five drop your comma, two minus one is one. All right, so let's slide over and look at what happens when we have all zeros in the ones, tens, and hundreds places. So we have more on the floor, so we have to go next door. Like I said, whenever you see a zero, you are going to have to borrow unless th there's a zero in the place right below it, okay? But since all of these are just regular numbers, that none of them are zeros, we're gonna have to regroup for all of these. So there's more on the floor, we're gonna go next door. There's no one home in the tens, so the tens goes to the hundreds. There's no one home there, so the hundreds goes to the thousands. Finally, someone's home, a four. We're going to mark out the four, make him into a three, and give that one to the zero in the hundreds place. He's going to become a ten. And now we can take one from him to give to his next door neighbor. So he's going to become a nine, and we're going to give the one to the zero here and become a ten. And now he can give one to his next door neighbor, so he's going to become a 9, and he's going to become a 10. Notice how this 10 does not become a 9 because I don't have any other places that I need to share with. Okay? So these two are both becoming 9s because they're sharing one with their next-door neighbor. But the 1's place doesn't share with anybody, so it stays a 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 6 is 3. 9 minus 4 is 5, drop your comma, 3 minus 2 is 1. Make sure you're marking out numbers as you are borrowing. If you do not mark them out, you're going to get very, very confused very quickly, okay? Your numbers need to be lined up nice and neatly or you're also going to get confused. Let's try a couple of more. Now, this one is interesting. I'm going to give you a second to look at this problem and see if you can figure out why it's interesting. Why is this different? If you noticed that this is saying zero minus zero, you are right. So I do not need to borrow to do this. I can just do zero minus zero is zero, okay? But when we get to the tens place, it's zero minus one. Now there's more on the floor. So the tens place is gonna have to go next door to the hundreds place. Knock, 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 there's no one home. So the hundreds place is gonna go to the thousands place. There is a five there. The five is going to become a four and give one to his next door neighbor. That doesn't help the tens out until we take one from the hundreds now, make him a nine, and then give him one from the hundreds. Now he's a 10. So now we can do 10 minus one, which is nine. And then we have num uh, numbers the same, zero is the game. Nine minus nine is zero. Four minus four is zero. So our answer is just 90 there, okay? Let's do one more regular across zeros um, because this is what you're gonna see typically when you have across zeros. There is more on the floor, so we have to go next door. No one is home. Go next door again. No one's home. The hundreds place goes to the eight. There is someone home. We're going to take one from the eight, and he's going to become a seven. We're going to give the one to the hundreds place. He becomes a ten. The ten is now going to give one to the tens place, so this ten is going to become a nine. We're going to give one to the tens place to become a ten. Now, the tens place is going to share one with the ones place, so we're going to mark the ten out. He's going to become a nine, 
and the zero is going to become a 10 over here. So now we're gonna do 10 minus nine is one, nine minus two is seven, nine minus six is three, seven minus four is three, drop your column. So subtracting can get very tricky very quickly if you do not go slow, if you do not show your work, and if you do not line up your numbers correctly, and if you do not mark out those numbers as you borrow and regroup, okay? As you're borrowing those numbers, make sure you're marking them out, all right? That is how you do four digit subtraction across zeros. Good luck on your work today, and let me know if you have any questions.